Today I will show you five essential text effects that you can apply today to make your edits look way better and finally blow up on social media. And to start, we're obviously gonna have to open After Effects, so let's not waste any time and get right into it. But before actually adding some cool animations, we obviously have to make our text look good first. And to do that, we're gonna add some effects like Deep Glow and Drop Shadow, so the text doesn't just look basic and has some effects to it. So once you type your text and you're ready to add the effects, open your effects and presets panel and search for Deep Glow. Drag onto the clip, put the exposure from 1 to 0.4 and the radius from 500 down to 350. Next, we're gonna search Drop Shadow, drag it onto our clip, put the opacity from 50 to 100, distance from 5 to 8, and softness from 0 to 5. And as you can see, the text already looks way better than the one we had before. And if you can't find the effects I use in this video in your After Effects, make sure to check the link in the description because they're all on my Discord server. Okay, so once we've enhanced our text from looking like this into looking like that, we can now go ahead and add the first animation, which is gonna be this cool expanding text that you can see all over social media. And the reason why you definitely want to use it is because it doesn't only just look good, it's also easy to make and adds a lot of detail to your edit. And to edit, there's simply just the animation preset that you have to search within After Effects. So go to your Effects and Presets tab and search for Increase Tracking. You should see this animation preset right here. Drag it onto your text layer. And now when you play your text, you should see that you have this awesome animation that's expanding the text. Now to adjust the timing and the mount, just click onto your layer, press U on your keyboard, and you should see two keyframes appearing. Let's say you want your animation to be a bit longer, you're just gonna go ahead and drag this keyframe to the right. If you want it to be shorter, just go ahead and drag it to the left. How much you put here is just gonna be dependent on your personal situation and how fast you want your text to move. If you now want to change how much your text is expanding, we're going to go to the second keyframe right here and adjust this value that's currently at 40. If you increase the value, obviously the width of your text is going to be increased. If you decrease it, it's going to be less. So depending on how much expansion you want for your edit, you're going to have to adjust this value. And as I said, I would definitely recommend you to start using that animation. Next, we're going to make this cool animation where you have these two lines fading up another clip from the middle. I've been seeing this animation on TikTok so much. Nearly every edit has it. So if you want to go viral, definitely give it a shot and try this animation out for yourself. And here's how you do it. First of all, we're going to have to add two clips to our timeline, which one is going to be the base clip and two, the one that you want to have fade up in the middle. I decided to add a clip from Batman. So to now add the animation, we're first of all going to have to adjust the size of the clip that we want to have fade up. So just click on that one, press S on your keyboard to bring up the scaling property and now just decrease the value till it looks something like this. Now open a line and press align horizontally so it's in the middle. And now for the lines, we're going to use a solid layer. So go ahead, click under layer, new and select solid. Make sure that the color is the one you want to have for your lines. Mine is going to be red, so I'm going to select red, press OK and OK. As you can see, it's currently covering the whole screen and we want to change that. So we're just going to click on the layer, press S on our keyboard to bring a scale property up again. Disable this little check mark next to the values that's basically going to constrain proportions so that we can now stretch the layer individually, horizontally and vertically. So first of all, we're going to put the value on the left down to zero and the second one we're going to put to one. What that does, it basically makes the layer a thin line that we can now use to make our animation. So go to where you want your animation to start and set a keyframe for the scale. Leave it at zero and go to the time where you want your line to be fully visible. Now change the value from zero to 100 and as you can see, we now have this line on our screen. But if you now play the clip, you're going to notice that the animation is pretty stiff because it's a linear graph. And now to change that, we're going to adjust the keyframes and make them easy ease. So just select both of them, right click, go to keyframe system and hit easy ease. Now when we open the graph editor, make sure to go right click and select edit speed graph and it should look something like this. Now by doing this, we have the ability to change the speed and phasing that our animation is in. Meaning that we can choose if it's either going to be fast at the beginning, fast at the end, fast in the middle, whatever you like. Now we want to adjust these handles, just click onto the graph. Now we should see this little red handle at the bottom. Just drag them a bit to the middle till it looks something like this. Now what this graph will do is basically gonna make your animation slow at the beginning, fast in the middle and then slow at the end again, which at the end will look something like this. Now obviously because we want two lines that are gonna have something fade up, we're gonna duplicate this layer and have it twice so that we can put one line at the top and one at the bottom. This should create the same layer again. Now to make the lines move, we're gonna click onto the layer, press P on our keyboard to bring up the positioning, right click onto it and click separate dimensions. Doing this is just also gonna give you the ability to manually change the graph of the X and Y position, meaning that it's not linked together anymore. And because we only need the Y position for for this animation, we're just gonna set a keyframe for that. Go ahead to the point where you want our line to be fully moved and then increase the value till it's at the edge of the clip that we want to have fade up. So just go like this and now do the same thing for the other layer as well. So just go ahead, select separate dimensions, set the keyframe at the beginning. But this time when we go to the second one, we want to actually decrease the Y positioning because obviously this time we want the line to be going up. So make it look something like this. Now like earlier, if you leave the animation like this, it's just gonna be linear and not look good. So once again, we have to easy ease and edit the graphs. Go ahead, select all the keyframes, right click, go to 
keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Now select the bottom one, open a graph editor and we're going to roughly try to copy the graph we did earlier. So just click onto it and then slowly drag the handle towards the middle like this. And apply the same step to the other keyframes as well. Now because I want my animations to be a bit overlapping, I'm actually going to go ahead, select both the keyframes and drag them a bit to the left while pressing alt on my keyboard. The reasoning behind that is basically that if you press alt while dragging this clip ahead, the aspect ratio between the keyframes will stay the same and you won't change the graphs or the values at all. So if you want, do this for both. And now when you play the clip, you should already see we have the kind of animation we want. But obviously it doesn't look good yet because our clip is just fading out of nowhere. So to change that, we're going to use some masks and trace it exactly to the line that's moving. So it's both revealed at the same time. For this step, we're actually also going to have to duplicate the clip that we want to have fade up. So just click on that and press Ctrl and D again. And now because I dragged my keyframes a bit, I'm also going to have to adjust the length of my clip. So just make it fit. So now we're just going to select one of the two layers, head to the top and select the rectangle tool. Now we're going to use this to make a symmetrical mask. So zoom in and now just create a mask around the top half of your clip until you meet the line, just like this. Now, as you can see, there should be a mask setting now under your clip. So expand that and set a keyframe for mask path. Go to where you want your animation to be finished and set a keyframe here as well. Now go back to the first keyframe that we set. And now by double clicking onto the mask, you can adjust it. So we're just going to drag it all the way down till it's on the thin line. Select both the keyframes, go to keyframe assistant, hit easy ease, open the graph editor. And we're also going to put the same graph on here as well. So just roughly copy it, close the graph editor again, and now go to the second clip that we earlier duplicated. And now we're going to do the same thing, but the other way around. So we're going to go from top to bottom. So select the rectangle tool and now draw a mask from the line to the bottom of your clip. Just like this. Now again, open the mask settings, set a keyframe for mask path, go to where you want your animation to end, which is obviously going to be the same place that we had earlier for the other mask and set another keyframe here for the mask pair. Go back to the first keyframe, double click onto your mask and then decrease the value till it's the thin line, just like this. Once again, we're going to have to adjust the keyframes. So keyframe assistant, easy ease, open a graph editor and copy the same graph. Now, if you have certain places where the line and the mask don't match, just go to your keyframe assistant, open the graph editor and then adjust the graph so it matches. Once it's done, you should already have your base animation. Hey, Paul! But what's very important to add now is to go on both of the red solid layers and enable motion blur. Also do that for your clip if you haven't already. This will just make the animation a bit smoother and it's definitely worth trying it. And now to make it look a bit better, we're gonna add this cool lightning effect to our line as well. And to do that, basically go to both your solid layers and duplicate each one once. So go ahead, select the bottom one, press Ctrl and D, then select the top one and also press Ctrl and D. Now in total, you should have four layers and we're just gonna pre-compose the ones that we duplicated now. Pre-composing means that you put the clip into a new composition and therefore have it isolated from the rest. So go ahead and to do that, just right click onto the clip and choose pre-compose. Select the bottom option and enable this check. Mark. Press OK and do the same one for the other one as well. Now next you want to go ahead and search for the turbulent displace effect in your effects and presets panel. Go ahead and drag that onto your pre-composed layer and what values you put in here is going to be dependent on what kind of look you want to achieve for your edit. I like to go for a look that's a bit more low key so if you want to do that as well follow my settings. If not then no problem just adjust them to your liking. So first of all we want to put the amount from 50 up to 200. Now go to the size and put it from 100 down to 5. As you can see if we now zoom in on the line we have this little lightning effect. So just go ahead select the effect press ctrl and c to copy it go to the other pre-composed position and paste it by pressing ctrl and v on your keyboard. Now we have a universal look which will just make it stand out a bit. Now if you remember the text effects we did earlier we're now gonna also use them to put them onto our solid layer to make it look a bit better because as you can see right now the plain red doesn't really look good. So go ahead select all the solid layers at once and pre-compose them by pressing ctrl shift and c. Use the same settings as earlier and press ok. Now the reason behind pre-composing here is that they all are now in a separated layer meaning that all the effects we applied to this pre-composition layer are gonna be applied to all the solid layers so we don't have to do it manually for four layers. Now an extra little effect that we want to put on the lines though before we add our text effect is going to be the bevel effect. So go to your effects and presets panel and search for bevel. Make sure to choose the one that's listed under shapes, the rounded beveled one and drag it onto the layer. This is just going to increase your depth a bit so now you can add deep glow and drop shadow. Now last but not least we're now finally going to add the wanted text and how I like to do it is to add it on top of the new layer we just had fade in. So we're going to go ahead, select the text bottom at the top, go to the time where our clip is fade up and then type the text in here. Make sure to center it using the align panel and also don't forget to add your text effects on here to make it look better. Now for the text animation, I'm going to use fade up words. So go to effects and presets and search for fade up words, drag it onto the layer and change the keyframes depending on how fast you want your text to be faded up. And once you've done all of that, this is what it should look like. What you do from here on is completely up in your hands. So be creative and add zooms, shakes, whatever you like. There's lots of different ways to do this animation and different effects that you can add on top of that as well. But as I said, this is very popular at the moment and if you use it, I guarantee you will blow up. And obviously you're going to have
have to adjust the values to how fast your characters are speaking and what you want for your edit. So keep that in mind and don't just blindly copy what I do because it might not fit in your specific scenario. And next, we're gonna create this awesome red box with text inside of it that you've been seeing all over social media. I think in this past week, I might have seen this box a bit more often than I see in actual sunlight. So let's get into it. So I've already prepared the text for the scene that I wanna use. So go ahead and click on the rectangle tool. Now hold down on it and select rounded rectangle tool. As you can see, it should be now a bit rounded and I'm now just gonna zoom onto my clip and create a shape of the size that I want my box to look like, which for me is roughly gonna be something like this. And now for the settings, we're gonna click onto the stroke first and disable that one. So just choose none and click okay. Next for the fill, we're obviously gonna enable it. So choose solid color, press okay. And now for the color, choose what you want because we want to make a red box. We're obviously gonna choose red, press okay. And you already have your base now. And next we wanna put our anchor point into the center of this newly created shape because we later want to make it fade up using scaling. And to do that, choose the pen behind tool, which is this one you can see right here. You can also access that by pressing Y on your keyboard. Then select the right layer. And while pressing control on your keyboard, click it twice. As you can see, the anchor point is now centered to the middle of our layer. And we can now proceed to add the animation. Now I want my animation to roughly start in this place of time. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut everything off. That's before that. Do that by pressing control, shift and D on your keyboard. And then just delete the access part. Now for the animation, we're going to make this cool scaling fading up effect. And who would have thought for that, we're just going to use the normal scale. So click onto the layer, press S on your keyboard to bring up the scaling property. And now set a keyframe at the very beginning. Go to where you want your animation to be finished, meaning where your box is fully going to be faded up. Set another keyframe here, leave it at 100 and go to the first one and put this one to zero. As you can see, if we now play it, it will slowly fade up. But again, like earlier, it's going to be a linear graph. So we also want to change the speed of this animation. So just select both of the keyframes, right click onto them, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Open a graph editor, right click onto it and select speed graph. Now zoom in a bit, click the handle on the right and just drag it all the way to the left till it doesn't move anymore. Now we can close the graph editor again. And now to make the solid look a bit better, we're going to go ahead and select layer on the top, go to layer styles and enable bevel and emboss. As you can see, you have a bit of shading going on now, which in my opinion looks pretty good. And now it's time to add the text that we want to put on top of the box. So go to the top, select the text tool, click onto the solid layer and type whatever your text is. Now adjust it however it fits into your box. And now to not make the animation with the scaling we did earlier all over again and have it linked to our text, we're going to use a certain option in After Effects that is going to link the transforming we have on our shape layer to our text layer as well. And to do that, just go to where it says parent and link and then select this little tool right here and drag it from the text to the shape layer like this. And now as you can see, the text is moving with the layer. And next to make the text and the shape layer look a bit better, we're also going to add the text effects, meaning deep glow and drop shadow onto these layers as well. And to do that, just go to the text layer where you edit your text effects, select both of them, press control and C, go to all the other layers and press control and V. As you can see, they are also glowing now and have these awesome text effects. Now because I don't want the glow of the box cover the original text, I'm just going to select both of these layers and drag them below the other text layer. And as you can see, it's not covering it anymore. And as you can see, if you know play your clip, you have this awesome text animation. None of your business. Now again, what size of shape layer and what size of text and effects you put is also going to be dependent on what edit you want to do. So be a bit creative and change the settings to your liking. Next is going to be this awesome logo saber fading up animation that I've been seeing in at least every edit once since the past five years. So make sure to not miss out and utilize it as long as you have the chance to. And how you do it is also pretty straightforward. You just have to get a PNG file of the image that you want to have fade in. Make sure it's not too complex and keep it simple. That way it's going to be easier. In my case, I chose this dollar sign because he's saying something regarding money. So I thought it would be a good match. And the first thing we want to do is select our PNG image, head to the top row, select layer and click on auto trace. Now select work area and leave the settings how they are. Press OK. And you should see once it's done, there's a lot of masks around the dollar sign. So you now just press M on the layer to bring up all these masks. Select them and copy them by pressing Ctrl and C. Create a new solid layer by pressing Ctrl and Y on your keyboard. The color doesn't really matter, so just press OK. And now by pressing Ctrl and V, paste the mask onto this layer as well. Now you can go ahead and just delete the original image from your timeline. Go into the solid layer, go to effects and presets and search for Saber. Drag it onto the layer and open a customized core settings. For the core type, we're going to put layer mask instead of Saber. Now open the render settings and instead of black, choose transparent. Now go all the way to the top again and put the glow intensity from 50 down to 10. Increase the core size a bit till it fits your expectations and change your color to whatever fits your edit. For me, it's going to be green because dollar sign. Now look at your text and if you have to adjust the position and the size of your solid. Once that's done, we don't want our dollar sign to cover our text, but rather to be in the background. So we're going to go ahead and drag it below our text. As you can see, it's now in the background. Now go to the place in time where you want your fading up of the logo to start and set a keyframe for the start offset setting on a customized core. Put the value to 100 and go to where you want your animation to be finished, which for me is going to be around here. Now set this value from 100 down to zero zero, which should automatically create a new keyframe. Select both of them, right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. And now when you play your clip, you should see that you have this awesome logo fade up animation. It certainly wasn't cheap. 
Now, if you want to add these cool drippy looking text effects to your edits, make sure to check out the first thing in the description because I'm still currently running a huge sale on my shop. You can get all my presets for up to 70% cheaper. So it's a missed opportunity for everyone who doesn't check it out. Trust me, once you apply high quality presets to your edits, you will blow up within days. So it's a good opportunity for new editors not only to get started and learn a bit, but also to gain some followers. And as I said, it's a huge opportunity because there's still currently a 70% sale. So make sure to click the first thing in the description and get your presets now. And if this tutorial was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe because only a minority of you people watching my content are actually subscribed. It will really mean a lot to me and make my day. As well as comment down below what tutorial you want to see next. As well as check out my Discord server. There's an active editing community. You can get free presets, overlays and scene packs. And there's other editors you can chat to, get advice from or you can talk to me. I'm sure I will be seeing you on there. Stay safe. I sincerely thank you for watching and see you next time.